Hello, and welcome to the screencast for uh, Zoll 851 on using uh, the sample function in R. So this is going to get us the basics uh, to do resampling, like permutation tests and bootstrapping, non-parametric bootstrapping in R. But first we need to look at the heart of it. There's one particular function which makes this very easy to do in R, and that's called the sample function. And both to do sampling with and without replacement, in other words, to, to use this for both permutation tests and for the non-parametric bootstrap, we can use the sample function. We just have to set a particular argument. And the basic function call is like here on line 8, uh, sample where x was going to be our vector, whatever numbers we're putting in, it'll be a vector of numbers, as we'll see. Uh, size, that's just saying how many numbers are we going to output, on the other side, and generally that's just going to be the length of it. You're going to want to output as many as you, you inputted, and then just whether you're going to have replace be false or true. Are you going to sample with replacement or without? So, for instance, if we have a vector, a y, which is just the numbers 1 to 10, just like that, we can call the sample function. In this case, we're doing sampling without replacement, which means anytime an element is pulled out of here, it's kind of used up and it can't be called again. So we do this, and what we do is we've shuffled the order of, of our original vector, but all the same numbers that were present in that, that are present in the vector y are also pre present in our new vector after resampling. So all we've done is shuffled with respect to order. Uh, it's worth knowing that with the um, sample function that that size argument does not actually need to be specified if you just want to be sampling, producing the same number of elements out that you're putting in. So if you have 10 elements going in, and that's how many you want out, you can actually skip it. This is just a, an example. I also want to make the point that when you do this, of course, each time you do this, you're getting a different ordering each time, that, that there's the stochastic element, which is essential for this to occur. But in each case, you are getting the numbers 1 through 10. You're just changing order. Since this is the same set of ob observation, with just the order shuffled, the mean and standard deviation will all be the same. So here's our mean of y and then a mean of a, uh, of a sample uh, after resampling, of course, the same. Similar if we do this for standard deviation. So just keep that in mind, that this is not going to change it. It's just shuffling the order of things. Now, for the bootstrap, instead of doing sampling without replacement, we want to do sampling with replacement. That means that for all of the uh, elements that we have in our vector, all of the numbers that we have there, we can sample them once, but that doesn't mean we can't sample them again. So you sort of think about it as we go into a bag of marbles, grab a marble, clone it, put it in a new, uh, in a new jar, and put the original one back in its old jar. And when we do that, we see, using the sample function, that we get, again, 10 numbers back, um, but in this case, you'll notice that we have a couple of numbers represented a few times. So we have two represented three times. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other ones that are, that are obvious here. And then there's numbers like three, uh, which aren't present at all, nor is the number one. And we do it again, and of course we get a different sampling. Ten, uh, we, we didn't specify the size argument, so again, we're going to get ten numbers. Um, and again, here we see 5 represented a few times, 8 represented 3 times, the numbers 1 and 9 are not even present at all. So in this case then, sampling with replacement, our means and standard deviations will of course be different. So let's do the same thing. The only thing we've done different now is have replace equals to true, to t. And when we do that, the mean of our original vector was 5.5. The mean of after resampling or sampling with replacement, we get a mean of 6.4. We do that again and do another resampling, and here we get a, our original uh, standard deviation was 3.02765. Here we see a slightly different one, 3.6. We'll get to how this will be useful when we talk about permutations and bootstrapping specifically. We can also use the sample function with specifying the size argument kind of to roll dice. So let's pretend we have a, a six-sided die, so and we want to randomly roll that dice and, and get one, see what the side is. Well, all we specify here is size equal 1. We're going to roll the six-sided die, so we're sampling from the numbers 1 through 6, but we're only taking, looking at a single instance of that. And, oops, I forgot to call that. <laughs> that doesn't make much sense, does it? Here we go. Uh, let's do that again. My apologies, there we go. Let's sample that again. And we get 1. And we could repeat that many times and we'll get a different number each time. Um, or 
What might be easier to do than that is just specify size equals to 10. If we want 10 independent rolls of the die, we do that, and here are 10 independent rolls of the die, all the numbers between 1 and 6. Okay. So the one other thing that's worth knowing about using the sample functions is sometimes we don't want to sample each independent element of a vector, but we're sampling rows or columns of a matrix, not the individual elements of, that ve of the vectors in there or individual elements of the matrix. To do this, we're going to use an R trick, which isn't, really isn't a trick. It's sort of a good way of thinking about things in R, which is namely using the index. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a new vector y3. So don't worry about it for the moment, it's just the number is 11 through 20. But we're going to combine, we're going to make uh, a matrix now, y, where y in its first uh, column, it has 10 rows and two columns. Its first column is just the numbers 1 through 10. Its second column is 11 through 20. What I want you to notice here on the left is remind yourself of the index here. Right? So that's saying this is the elements of row 1, elements of row two, and so on. Well, what we can do is we can use the sample function to sample along the elements of the index, specifying rows. Um, and so what we're going to do in the sample function is we'll specify the number of rows as the first argument in sample. Now, this is going to seem a little weird, because before we were sampling a vector, now you're, I'm saying, hey, just put in a single number. And when you go in n row of the, of the matrix, it's just going to give a single number. But actually, it is giving a vector, because when you call when you do a single number in sample like that, say you do 500, what it will do in this particular function is generate a sequence of integers from 1 to 500, or whatever your n is. So all you need to do is you call y, but instead of sampling y directly, the, the matrix directly, and we'll take a quick look and see what happens again, we're looking in the index, and in the rows, we're going to call the sample function, which we'll specify x as number of rows, which is going to be 1 to however many rows there are, in this case 10, Size, again, will just be uh, uh, will be 10. And in this case, we want to replace equals true. And we do that, and what we see is we get each row is identical to the original rows of y, but we've sampled them with replacement. So several of the rows are repeated. The 2, 12 row, for instance, is repeated four times in this case. If we had just instead gone sample y, we get a vector of length 20, um, but it's not as uh, a particular, it's not organized in our rows, and so it, it all jumbled up. Again, just like we did before, we can skip putting the size equals argument here because it will default to, to what is sensible, in this case to the length of x, and we'll get, get the right sort of thing there. And this is basically all we need to know to be able to now implement this into functions for permutations and bootstrap tests, which will be part of the next screencast. Thank you.